All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Innovation Through Design, the next generation of traffic management plans presented by IntelliTraffic, a division of ATS Traffic. We're gonna get started here right away, but before we do, I just wanna uh, go through some quick housekeeping items. If you have uh, questions throughout the presentation, feel free to send them our way. Um, you can do this by uh, typing your questions into the questions tab on your control panel. Uh, you should see the controls on the top right of your screen. Uh, you might have to expand it in order to see the questions chat box. Um, we will also be um, uh, recording this uh, webinar and we'll send it out to you um, in a follow-up email. So, um, so yeah, uh, more on the questions. Um, if we don't get to all the questions today. Um, we'll also follow up with you um, via email. So I'm going to now turn it over to our panelists, uh, Steve, Bogdan, and Thorne. Gentlemen. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Peter, for the uh, introduction there. Uh, my name is uh, Steve Ennis. And uh, I am the uh, Executive Vice President of IntelliTraffic, uh, which is the engineering consulting piece of ATS Traffic. Uh, alongside me here today, we have Bogdan Schrapp. Good morning. He is our traffic design lead, um, manages all things uh, design related and put together this beautiful webinar. So he'll um, manage a lot of the technical uh, discussion today. Uh, also here today, we have Thorn Forrest, PNG. Hello, everyone. Uh, Thorne is our uh, transportation uh, engineer. He'll speak to some specific projects and um, provide some insights wherever he can. So today's uh, uh, agenda, we will um, first go over a little bit about ATS traffic very briefly uh, and IntelliTraffic and how it fits together. Um, we'll then jump into um, talk about the differences between CAD produced um, drawings uh, versus other design methods. Uh, we'll talk about work zone design for vulnerable road users. This is big right now. Uh, jump to introduction of uh, innovative products through drawings, then uh, some advanced techniques and tools. We'll look at a couple of case studies, one in Lake Louise, one in Airdrie. Uh, talk about uh, the importance of audits, and then we'll get to uh, a Q&A. So a little bit about uh, a little bit about the ATS's history. Uh, we started as a barricade rental company from a from a garage, not not really unlike companies like Apple or Google, although we have not experienced quite the same uh, growth curve. Um, we evolved into sign manufacturing and product distribution. We have a healthy um, sign manufacturing business right now and product distribution. Um, we also got into the business of work area protection, so uh, work zone. Uh, services uh, and design. Um, and now IntelliTraffic is uh, the newest division of ATS and it represents uh, all things design, uh, data, and we have some interesting uh, research happening as well with the uh, University of Alberta. So ATS is, uh, ATS strives to be a, a one-stop shop for all things traffic safety, uh, really. We, um, we look at our customer traffic safety issues and we try to create some custom solutions um, and follow these straight through to um, to the in-field installation or uh, or management of these projects. We're headquartered headquartered in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. <clears throat> we have branches uh, across Western Canada in Langley, uh, Calgary, Saskatoon, Regina, and Winnipeg. Uh, we're also actively pursuing work in, in Ontario and and, and uh, just sort of planning our move into uh, Eastern Canada. ATS is the largest 3M sign fabricator in Western Canada and currently have a staff around uh, 250 people right now. We have many, many partners um, that contribute to the success of, uh, of ATS. Uh, most of these partners, you know, we distribute and, uh, and sell their products either directly to customers or as a pull through for some of our projects. Uh, these projects range from orange traffic cones to more complex traffic camera systems that leverage uh, predictive analytics and AI uh, type technology to uh, 
to, to try and eliminate motor vehicle collisions and pedestrian fatalities and serious injuries. Um, just a, a quick mention here, you know, some of the products that you'd see in some of the work zones as, as that relates to what we're talking about today. We have PSS, this is the, uh, the, the rumble strip that you put in advance of a work zone to, uh, to uh, shake up the driver or tell them there's a work zone coming up. It's a portable speed bump. We have MDI, these are all your wind masters that you'd see as advanced uh, signage coming into the work zone. Uh, we have traffic devices. These would be all your uh, your orange uh, traffic drums, channelizers. Uh, you even got Laura Metal here. This would be um, some of the steel barrier that you see in uh, in work zones now. And we'll, we'll speak to some of these. Okay, so uh, so on Intelli traffic, Intelli traffic has uh, as it stands today has uh, four different departments within the division. Um, we are going to be focusing right here today on uh, on the design and uh, specifically traffic accommodation strategies and plans so the first uh, section that we'll get into here is um, we're going to talk about CAD produced uh, drawings versus um, other um, design methods uh, such as rapid plan and um, so we're going to jump into this here, and uh, we'll let uh, we're going to let Bogdan sort of go through some of these slides here now. So the first one you're seeing is a hand-drawn sketch uh, of a work area in Edmonton, and the things that are, are missing from this one are parking restrictions, the back alley accesses, any relevant existing signs length of tapers and buffers, the road geometry, which is islands and all kinds of uh, dividers, the lane markings, the direction of traffic, all the equipment requirement, because it's not a to scale drawing that doesn't show us how many, exactly how many cones do we need or barricades. And we found this location and we reproduce it with our AutoCAD software, which would be the next slide. Yeah, so reproduce this. You know, this is what um, this is what it would look like uh, in CAD, right? Not on uh, on on graph paper. It will give you a location of University of Alberta. So setting it up, it would be easier to find. Uh, plus, it will show the work area in exact in meters. Plus, you will have a legend that tells all the equipment needed. And yeah, the bus stops that need to be moved the cross section the um, crosswalk they need to be closed or relocated okay and the next one would be a rapid plan produce um, setup uh, which is a software by invariant um, pretty much the same things that are missing in the hand sketch would be missing from this one which would be back alley accesses not being to scale the direction of traffic is not shown also the orientation of the traffic signs is not shown um, and we'll jump to the next slide which will show an AutoCAD produce drawing for the exact same location and as you can see extends way beyond what uh, rapid plan was produced because with the speed was not taken into consideration being a 60 and we had to drop it to 50 because we're sending the traffic in a two-way split situation. Also the keep right um, existing speed signage uh, need to be covered and the bus stops move. This is part one of the drawing. You can see in the left top corner, you can see the key plan. It will show you exactly where we are located right now. Next uh, slide would be the continuation of this one. Um, in the key plan, you'll see uh, where exactly this goes. Also, a cross section through the work area showing where the traffic is located both ways and the closure and not affecting the sidewalks. Okay. This one, uh, this is a method used quite a lot when submitting for approval from a governing authority which is submitting um, typical uh, drawing from the manual. 
either AT, BC, or um, Calgary, Edmonton. And because we choose a drawing that kind of um, shows both typicals, uh, what typicals don't take into account is uh, what was mentioned earlier, plus um, bike lanes and sidewalks, pedestrian detours, islands conflicting existing zones, line of sight restriction, public transport, if needs to be detour or not. And we're going to show an, a drawing. Part one of it is restricting the southbound to eastbound um, because the work area is on the north side of the intersection. And we have to restrict that movement because a bus wouldn't be able to take that turn. Also, we'll have to restrict the pedestrian crossing east-west plus um, the bike lane closure, which we mitigate by putting a, a share the road sign. And since we can allow that movement, we establish that by doing a turning radius analysis, which is on the next slide, next slide which will allow uh, westbound to northbound plus eastbound to southbound, but not the other movements simultaneously. And since we had to restrict that uh, bus uh, turning movement, we also provided a detour for the for public transit. So I just I just want to um, add something there that uh, you know while the goal of all of this is to create safer work zones for for the motoring public, for the workers, for vulnerable road users, um, you know the the benefit of of getting it right the first time is there's less revisions uh, back and forth with uh, with the approving authority, right? Whichever level of government that might be. Um, so when you take proper care of the design out of the gate, what ends up happening is um, you start to develop a little bit of trust with the approving authority, and it gets the contractor on the road quicker a lot of the time when you when you do this right. Um, okay, we're going to jump into a different section here. Um, this is a, a real trending uh, topic right now: is uh, vulnerable road users. Um, so really, you know, as, as cities evolve, uh, people begin utilizing multimodal transportation. It's never been more important to consider uh, all users of the roadway. So whether you're on a bike, uh, in a new pair of Nikes, or, uh, or flying down the street on a longboard, um, we absolutely need to consider all of those people uh, who might need to navigate uh, the work zone. So this section will address um, some, some techniques and some considerations to do just that. So here's just some, um, and you know, we, we apologize, there's much better stats available for US, but we, we, the point that we wanted to make here is that, that the pedestrians uh, involved in fatalities through work zones are nearly the equivalent of the workers uh, that are killed. Um, so this is this is pedestrians. This is this is cyclists. So we're at 122 compared to 124. Um, obviously not not uh, in the same league as uh, as trucks or vehicles. Um, but that people are dying. People are dying in work zones. Uh, pedestrians. And so that's why we decided to uh, to create a, an entire section out of this. Okay. So this. Um, the aim of this reverse traffic pyramid was presented to us by the city of Calgary originally, and it prioritized active travel and it aims to decrease the congestion and pollution in a car centric city. So, in this pyramid, walking and cycling are prioritized above any other means of transportation. Um, that will uh, be a wide ranging um, benefits and environmental cost benefits and economic. In designing our work zones, we try to follow this principle as much as we can in conjunction with the Vision Zero initiative. But the main purpose is to keep uh, the more vulnerable people moving and moving safely. So this, this pyramid is... Uh... You know, I think millennials can relate to this pyramid. Um, 
and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily put stereotypes on anyone, but, um, you know, the aging uh, generation has a harder time with this pyramid. And I wanted to slip this slide in more for uh, some comedic, comedic relief than anything else. But uh, I took a trip to, uh, to Laos um, six or eight years ago, and I rented a scooter um, to travel through the countryside there. And I asked the person I rented a scooter off of, so, you know, what are the rules of the road? Um, do we, you know, do anything I need to be aware of? And uh, he looked at me sort of dumbfounded and said, small yield too large. <laughs> so apparently the exact opposite of the pyramid that was presented by the uh, the city of Calgary. Um, so it's different. It's, it's absolutely different in uh, other parts of the developing world. Um, but this pyramid um, uh, works well for uh, for the developed world for sure. And if anything else fails and we cannot maintain uh, the, the pedestrian and cycling traffic, we will have to close a bike lane or a sidewalk. We'll, we got to make sure we make that very obvious and we guide pedestrian cyclists with uh, barricades and um, signage, making sure they can find a way and a safe way to navigate the work zone. Right. And, you know, and the and the signs available to us, the arsenal of signs available to us through um, you know provincial sign catalogs or uh, or city uh, signs sign specs, uh, it's ever expanding. This is this is becoming a focus, and uh, and there's lots of standard signs now to be placed in uh, in work zones. So this is an example of keeping people moving with the um, hoarding permit, which is required by the city of Calgary. They'll have an, a lot of requirements. Some of them would be to maintain pedestrian flow. So in this case, um, we'll be using uh, CCAN uh, as a covered sidewalk, which can see in the pictures on the left. And that consists in a, a shipping container with cut out uh, windows and illumination for the nighttime and positive guidance inside with a railing. And this can be used, can be placed on an existing sidewalk or on the street, uh, as long as it's protected. This also allows for the hoisting of material over the existing sidewalk when the site doesn't allow that. Um, the offices of the construction company can be also placed on top of the hoarding permit. And this is one of the hoarding permits we used. And on the east to west location, which is 14th Avenue, we have a sea container actually on the road, which is protected by low profile concrete barriers and a trash alternator, plus uh, uh, retro reflective tabs. Also, the corridor extends to the south. In this case, they didn't need to hoist anything over the sidewalk, so it's just protected by barriers. We made sure we close the sidewalk and make it obvious with fencing and signage. Plus, we had to move people from the existing sidewalk over the green space and from the road into the secan, and that's why we use a platform and a paved surface. Also, we have a cross section of the east-west uh, street and one for the north-south. Uh, also taking account the parking and all of the contractors' needs as well. All right, um, into our uh, next section of the presentation here. Uh, innovation starts with um, with the design. There's many new profit, uh, products, traffic technologies, uh, traffic movement systems, uh, such as the Zipper Merge, which we'll speak to. Um, so, so we do scour the globe for uh, new products and devices that are intended to save lives, um, save lives on the roadway and, and specifically work zones. So these drawings um, present a, a, an awesome opportunity to, uh, to design some of these innovative products right into the project, uh, of course, for approval. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's our way of showing the approving authority or the industry sort of what we've seen around the globe. And uh, 
so we'll go through a couple of these things here now. The Hyperstrong Bridge Rehabilitation Activities that happened a few years ago, which um, uh, the governing authority mandated it to the contractor to maintain at least two ways, two lanes of traffic each way, which presented a big challenge, especially being on Deerfoot, which is the busiest um, road in Alberta. And we accomplished that by um, having a queue detection uh, warning system, which uses sensors on approaching the work zone and variable message boards that are uh, light updated, plus providing alternative routes for the Deerfoot using Barlow and Stony Trail. Yeah, so this is the application of ITS technologies, um, you know, right into Calgary. So uh, Thorne's with us here and he's going to uh, he's going to speak a little bit to this project. Um, I guess I can speak to the zipper merge. Uh, the zipper merge is fantastic and and really uh, the problem with the zipper merge still lays in the education uh, public just just how a zipper merge is supposed to work and that it and that it uh, it is the most effective way of moving people through a work zone when both lanes of traffic come to the spot of the merge and then um, the zipper merge one one after the other uh, so that's how it's intended to work um, Drivers are resistant uh, to this for some reason. Uh, it's a seemingly less polite maneuver. Um, thus, this education piece is, is absolutely vital. But the zipper merge is something that we do design uh, into our drawings. Hi everyone, Thorn Forest here, and I'll just uh, describe to you a project that we did, the Armstrong Bridge, which excuse me, Bogdan has already introduced you to a project that took place um, in the summer of 2016. Iverstrong Bridge is uh, spanning Deerfoot Trail uh, and I'm sorry, spanning the Bow River and takes Deerfoot Trail and we're talking about the southbound direction, takes Deerfoot Trail uh, from uh, across the Bow River. So the important thing to our to the owner of this project, Alberta Transportation, was that we have a minimal impact on traffic patterns. And as you know, Deerfoot Trail is the busiest road in in uh, Alberta. And uh, in the year of this project, it was carrying approximately 126,000 uh, vehicles a day. So it was in Alberta Transportation's interest to try and find some kind of solution to help minimize some of the impacts that we were going to have uh, because of this project. Um, the reason why they were working on the Everstrong Bridge was for maintenance activities. And the one that probably impacted traffic the most was the uh, reverberation of the um, expansion joints of the bridge. So IntelliTraffic proposed AT two systems, two uh, intelligent transportation systems that they could use to help mitigate some of the impacts that we were all anticipating. One of them was the use of uh, traffic flow sensor sensors uh, that we use to detect slowing or stopping traffic on Deerfoot Trail to and the, re and the purpose for this was to help uh, minimize the uh, number of rear end collisions that we would see on Deerfoot Trail once the traffic was slowed down for the construction activities. The second uh, ITS system that we implemented was a alternate route system uh, where we used uh, network data to uh, uh, let drivers know on Deerfoot Trail um, uh, which of three alternative routes, uh, including the route across the bridge, would be most favorable for them uh, to reduce their uh, delay time. So the three routes were uh, over the bridge itself, uh, using a Barlow Trail, where it connects from Deerfoot Trail at the south and in the north, and uh, or I should say north to south. And the third alternate route was Stony Trail. Uh, we used Intrix for the data and we used Vermax 
um, Jam Logic software as an interface between the uh, between the uh, software data, uh, uh, traffic data, and the uh, message boards, uh, which uh, we use to alert the drivers uh, on Deerfoot Trail to the three different alternative routes. We also use the Jam Logics interface between the uh, flow sensors or the queue detection sensors and two additional message boards. So the outcome of this project was um, that the alternative route systems allow drivers to choose their best route through the, uh, through the work zone and the queue warning system minimized rear end collisions when queuing did occur. And a final uh, uh, outcome was a uh, an awarding of the Minister's Award of Excellence for Construction Innovations for Intilla Traffic, which was a very nice cherry on the top for for us. Excellent, thanks, Thorne. Um, gonna gonna speak to some other um, um, innovation in the form of uh, products. Uh, we have the steel barrier with the crash attenuator devices. So this would be an alternative to the concrete barrier, which are regarded, regarded mostly like for a long time project. But this system can be deployed just like any other delineator and or signage. It, it does require a crane, but it can be set up in war zone that previously wouldn't have protection by a concrete barrier, but and now we, they have one by steel barrier. So in the drawings on the left, you can see that it is on both sides of the work zone and traffic it is also on both sides of the work zone. And they have a crush, a TL3 crush and the terminator at the end of each uh, steel barrier, which are connected to the existing concrete barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the innovation in this product is, is, uh, is twofold. It's the simplicity of the deployment, but also it's a smaller footprint. Uh, so it allows the workers uh, more space to work uh, while they're on the other side of the barrier there. Also, uh, by designing this in AutoCAD and being to scale, it will give you an exact number of sections that you will need for the steel barriers. Right. The truck mounted crash attenuator is something we use on roads that are uh, gazetted speed 80 kilometers or higher. And we use it when we take a lane. And we did have incidents happening last year at the, one of our trucks and it did the job and everybody was safe. And you can see on the video on the right how it actually performs. And we include it in drawings. Um, in this case, we have it, have the contractor work truck um, being piloted by one of our trucks and safeguarding the back with a truck mounted attenuator. The AFADs, automatic flagger assistant devices. This is a project uh, we did in BC and still requires the presence of a flagger, which, but it will be located outside of the danger zone, which is traffic and is radio controlled. And being, um, it saves um, life, but not exposing, exposing the traffic control person to traffic. In this case, it was not uh, used all the way to the project because, because it was a rock slide uh, detonation. So they cleared the, the road with the uh, explosives and radio would interfere with that. But for, for the most of it, uh, the system works. Yeah, this is a beautiful life-saving device. It's um, the job of, of a flagger is more dangerous than it's ever been as more and more people seem to be driving uh, distracted. So it's it's devices just like this, you know, maybe may paired with uh, a set of rumble strips in advance of the work zone that uh, are incredibly effect effective in saving lives. We also design traffic lights into controlling traffic, and this case being around a 90 degree band flaggers wouldn't work uh, because they have to be in line of sight. These are um, either radio controlled or hardwired traffic lights. This specific scenario, what we uh, encountered on this side of the road, on the right side of the driver approaching, we couldn't set it up because of barriers and an incline in the road. So we had to set it up on the left side and turn this at 
to swivel around so it will be over the live traffic. There are good alternatives to flaggers, especially at nighttime when you also need uh, overhead illumination and it's more dangerous to have people exposed. So we do design those in the triangles. Okay, um, next section we're going to get to here is some advanced uh, techniques and tools in preparing these drawings. All right, so at occasions we are uh, requested to design structural drawings. In this case would be a side mounted uh, uh, sign for the southwest ring road. And we design it from the structure that's in the ground all the way to the actual sign. Another example is the city of Saskatoon. Um, by then having a specific type of barrier, we had to design a, a saddle bracket that will fit their standard barrier. The cross section, the importance of um, wet. This is a project we did in the um, city of Lethbridge over the Old Man River. Um, they had to repair the center of the bridge. Um, that's why we moved the traffic to the outside lanes. And by showing a cross section, we actually show the contractor they have enough space for the work zone for the outriggers, the hydrovax, and all kinds of uh, activities that they're doing there. Also, providing to the governing authority the traffic, the minimum uh, lanes are kept and the minimum width per lane is kept. And uh, public transport or emergency vehicles can still go to the work zone safely. And we also use um, turning uh, analysis uh, software. It's not an AutoCAD based, but um, what this does will uh, show you the swept path, swept path of a truck at a certain speed. And in this case, it will have to clear an obstacle, which would be the end of the divider. And it, it will not. Also, this will be a conflict but we can show to the contractor exactly how much it has to remove. So you will not spend construction time and money to erase more than it needs to be. Yeah, this is, this is a nice tool and, and will help the contractor uh, uh, sort of calculate um, quantities and, and square meters uh, that need to be removed. Uh, it helps with a lot of their earthworks um, calculations. And the opposite of that one, by doing um, simulation of the turning analysis, we can um, make sure that the paving for a cross section doesn't exceed the contractor um, capabilities and will keep uh, the cost to a minimum. So this was um, this was an interesting um, project in the city of Red Deer, Alberta. Um, they were doing some uh, some bridge repairs, had some temporary traffic lights on either side of the bridge. Uh, and you know what they were uh, what they were concerned about is the queuing uh, on either side of these traffic lights, um, and specifically the queuing uh, in this direction here, because there was some businesses along the roadway here. So they just wanted to be sure that um, that the sequencing of the traffic lights, would be such that the queuing would not ever um, impact people's ability to turn into the uh, into the businesses here. So, uh, so what we did was we used a um, beautiful piece of software, uh, Synchro, Sim Traffic, um, working with the uh, city of Red Deer. They provided the traffic volume uh, data and speeds and uh, inputting these data we can uh, essentially model what these cues will look like um, when we work in the sequencing of the traffic lights so this is the this is the pm the, the peak pm um, traffic queuing and this is they didn't want anybody oh i can't draw on this video <laughs> but these are the building or the uh, businesses here that they that they didn't want anybody um, uh, being affected. So just another another advanced tool there. OK, 
Okay, so this is an example on how we can help uh, a contractor by working with them to the project. In this case is um, taking an intersection, the traffic lights controlled, and that would be stage one, and building a detour around so they can build a bridge that will turn into an overpass and will make the east-west uh, pre-flow. So in stage two, the, the detour gets built a little bit more and it will be available for traffic to move on to. Then it will be removed the existing um, intersection, the uh, more added to the detour and so on until we get to the final phase, which is overpass fully function. This is just six stages, but we can expand to even more than that. We also design for any province, or um, in this case, we'll be, we have the Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, but also, for example, in Alberta, we have manuals for the city of uh, Red Deer, Alberta, in Calgary, Edmonton, Parks Canada, they have their own specific rules that need to be applied. And we do have the knowledge to design in each of these provinces. And jurisdictions. This is a case study. Oh, go ahead. Mark. Go ahead. Lake Louise, which is managing concurrent traffic challenges, and it consists in three overlapping activities. The first one would be the seasonal congestion, which is during the summertime, a little bit on the spring and uh, fall, uh, managing all the tourist traffic that goes to Lake Louise and Lake Moraine. And this example is just one page of the project is managing the upper and lower uh, parking lot in front of the Lake Louise Chateau uh, by traffic um, personnel, uh, signage, parking restrictions and uh, message boards. This is a uh, multiple traffic control station with traffic control personnel. And this goes throughout the tourist season. And on top of that one, we have a case of an emergency vehicle going through all the traffic control station. In this case, the RCMP and the fire department. And we did have a timing matrix that allows our uh, traffic control personnel to clear the road for the emergency vehicles. They know when to expect that. Uh, we have a clear radio communication protocol and the third activity is uh, incidental construction that is was scheduled during the previous activities is installing traffic lights in the intersection the only way to do it is to um, cut across the intersection all sides of it and we have to split traffic in a two-way alternating uh, two-way traffic split and being Parks Canada it has the particularity of a bilingual signage and a message boards have to assign uh, come to that also static signs and managing all three projects at a time being aware of those happening and we can design for that another case study is the city of Erdry which we call maintain uninterruption. And it refers to the deep utilities work on the main street in Erdry, which is the main uh, collector, the main road in Erdry. And it's a full closure. That means some communities are being cut off and access to four emergency vehicles and residents is cut off. And we accommodate that by uh, building new pieces of road that will connect the missing um, links. Plus, we made sure we direct people with verbal message boards and custom static signs to keep the businesses and residents um, flowing at all times. And at a bigger scale, we try to discourage um, any vehicles going through the closure or the detour. So we have created a bigger detour around the affected war zone and smaller detour for residents affected by the closure. 
Okay, our last uh, our last section here before we uh, we get to uh, questions are uh, our audits. So it's uh, you know it's one thing to produce uh, the perfect drawing, which will mean the uh, the setup of the perfect work zone, the safest work zone. Um, but you know very often that work zone looks great for a day or two, uh, and then as time goes on, barricades fall, signs fall. Uh, things start to get all out of whack. So this is, a, you know, just really quickly about the importance of uh, of audits. Um, so, you know, we do we do offer a, a service uh, whereby a traffic technician would go out to the site and and audit the work zone, audit the work zone for um, spacing between devices, and we make sure it's conf uh, conformity with the traffic control plans. And we can also be on site during the setup or the takedown to make sure that's been done in the right order. Uh, also, been checking the tow behind equipment like airports, message boards, and any for tripping hazards or pedestrian traffic being affected or not regulated the right way. And nighttime requirements, which would be lights on barricades and reflective reflectivity on signs and barricades. Okay. So that concludes the uh, presentation portion of uh, of the webinar. So uh, I'd like to turn it back over to uh, to Peter, and he will facilitate uh, the question session. All right, great job, guys! Very informative presentation. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to questions now, and if you have one, please type it into the question box. Uh, we had one from uh, from Curtis earlier on, and it was during the turning radius uh, section, and he was just wondering about um, roundabout design and if turning radius is uh, uh, that that feature can be used for those roundabouts. Absolutely, uh, auto turn software can assist in the design of. Uh, of uh, roundabouts. Um, we don't design roundabouts, but they could definitely be used to analyze uh, the roundabout if any uh, uh, work zone activities are gonna be completed around them for sure. All right, um, another question just came in. Uh, do you have any current technology for counting cars and people that could be used to discover length of stay in one area, perhaps using Bluetooth tech? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, that's a big part of our, uh, of our distribution business. Yeah, we have all sorts of, uh, whether it's, it's Bluetooth or license plate recognition or uh, bicycle counts, pedestrian counts, there's all sorts of uh, data collection devices uh, out there, all, all kinds of ways to collect the data that's requi required uh, to make intelligent decisions. And yes, we distribute uh, all of these. So um, when we send a follow-up email, um, there'll be some contact information and I, yeah, I'd like to connect with whoever uh, asked that question. Already, another question here. Um... How do you go about uh, to create a, a scale plan using the best scale and not having the plan too small on the page sheet? Do you use bigger page sizes to counteract? We have two options in this case. One would be obviously to change the scale and blow up the drawing in the paper space. Also, our um, signs and all the equipment are set up as blocks in AutoCAD, which means they can all be enlarged, keeping the actual the drawing at the same scale. Okay, great. Okay, that looks like all the questions we have. So uh, once again, um, we'll be sending out the recording of the webinar, um, as well as the contact info of the panelists. So I want to encourage everyone here to reach out if you have questions about any of the topics covered today, 
or if you'd like to learn more about how the experts at uh, Intel Traffic can help you with your um, traffic accommodation strategies. So uh, with that, I just want to thank our panelists for all of their insights today, and uh, thank you all for joining us. And so have a great day, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.